probably am not alone in this, that I'm always trying to come up with other ways or materials that I can use for my hobby, the flyer collection. And uh, one of those things uh, I recently attempted to do had to do with an engine repair. So uh, today I'd like to share that with you and it may be something that you've tried yourself. So don't go anywhere. Today we're gonna look at an engine repair using non-standard flyer materials. Today on Austin's American Fly. Alright, well here is going to be a somewhat quick uh, video just doing a general service of a GP7. Um, this has uh, recently joined the fleet here and I actually have not done anything to it. I've just been running it um, and it's been starting to act up a little bit and so um, it's time to take a look at it. I also started to hear a little bit of that squawk that comes from uh, lack of lubrication. So. Obviously not something I want to keep operating if it's going to be needing lubrication. So we're going to go ahead and do some of that. But I'm planning on just taking it apart just to do a general inspection. And I don't know if it will be cleaning needed or not. But uh, we'll see here. For those of you that are not familiar uh, with GP7s, they are single motor. So there's just one powered truck on one end, and the other truck would just be a power pickup. One other thing that I noticed about this particular uh, truck is that the additional pickups uh, are not, not extended uh, like they should be. So I'm um, going to need to investigate that. I don't know if the springs are bad or if they're just stuck. Okay, that one... That one's just got a real weak spring, I think. How about this one here? That one has no spring, so. <laughs> All right, mystery solved. So at this point, we're gonna fast forward through this general service of this GP7. All things that I'm sure you've seen before and if you haven't I'm sorry to rob you of the pleasure of going through this in a more detailed way but the nutshell is I took the shell off and then I lubricated things and then I put the shell back on then we get to the part that I'm sure you're all very curious to know about and that is what is it that Austin did that failed epically <laughs> and so that is what we're going to speedily get to by mo moving this video or film speed up 600% or six times. So I took a spring, cut it down, and now I'm stretching it. And the reason I'm doing that is because these the springs I'm using here are just a little bit on the big side. So I'm trying to weaken them a little bit. And they're just a little bit on the big side, too. You want to know where I got these springs? 
I'll tell you. I got them from a pen. <laughs> and like I said, they're slightly oversized for like an engine, but I think this kind of an application has some potential. So now what I'm doing is I'm twisting them um, just to decrease the diameter a little bit. Obviously they're going to spring back and that's fine. I just want to reduce them by a hair and a freckle, I believe, is, a, is the proper terminology for the distance dimensions. Nope, still not quite small enough, so we'll go a little bit more. I guess I don't need to save any more of those pen springs. They don't work. I was going to do some videoing of this GP7 that I repaired and cleaned up and fixed the additional um, spring pickups between the trucks and I was going to film how flawlessly and smoothly it ran around my layout and uh, well it ran less and less smoothly until it quit going in reverse completely and going forward um, was like it was going uphill with no load so I put it brought it back over here to the bench and here's what I found so I found that this uh, wire to the field had come completely uh, broken and unsoldered and I didn't see that I actually took the motor loose um, took uh, the uh, gear covers off made sure everything was lubricated well and I was just scratching my head and <laughs> Then I saw, well, a wire's broken. 
um, I should know to look for such things by this point. So then I applied power and um, couldn't get the thing to go. And then finally it started to go, but it was going with, with all the power applied, it was hardly spinning. And then I discovered that one of these brushes was just, you hear that? So for some reason it's tending to be pulled uh, someplace where it shouldn't and I'm going to uh, try to adjust the, the spring up here um, just a little bit to see if I can get more consistent speed out of it. But um, yeah, for some reason, and I can't tell you why, the brush was in that position but as soon as I touched it the motor went from just barely running to, to this kind of RPM. So uh, these these little alcos are finicky, and uh, they are great when they run. And when they decide they don't want to run, well, then there's a bit of tug of war, a bit of strong will right there. <laughs>